Hi, this is Miles from Represent, and in this short video I'm going to introduce you to the essential aspects of data modeling in RapidML, the main modeling language used in Represent API Studio. RapidML is used to define the structured data types used in our API. These data types are technology independent. The API Studio code generation framework will adapt them to the media types supported by our API. Rapid models may contain resource API and data model definitions, but this one only contains a data model. Data structures like these define canonical data types, which may be realized in resource definitions, request and response messages. Structures contain primitive properties like these, and may also contain reference properties like this one here in tax filing, which refers to another structure of type person the taxpayer. The data model may also contain enumeration elements. These define data types consisting of a set of named constants with unique values and may be of type int or string. The tax filing status enum of type int is used here in the tax filing structure as the type for the status property. Finally, simple type elements like these define data types based on either primitive types or on another simple type. Simple types may be defined with or without constraints. When defined without constraints, they simply provide an additional layer of meaning over the underlying primitive type. Now, let's take a look at cardinality in the context of the structures. This table summarizes the available cardinalities and the notations used in RapidML. If nothing is specified, the default cardinality for a property is 0 or 1, meaning optional and single-valued. We can indicate this explicitly using a question mark or using the long form like this. Optional multi-valued cardinality is indicated like this. We can also make a property required. If there must be exactly one occurrence, we indicate it like this. And one or more occurrences is indicated like this. We recommend you avoid making properties and structures required as this limits flexibility in realization. If a property is required in the data structure, you cannot make the property optional in the realization, so it's best to leave it up to the API to decide if a property is required or not. In the person structure, we can see that other names, tax filings and addresses are all lists. They have a cardinality of zero or more. In RAPID, you can apply four types of constraint to primitive properties. The year property in tax filing uses a numeric value range constraint. The currency property uses a fixed string length constraint. And the jurisdiction property uses a bounded string length constraint. Note how the optional fluency keywords are not in bold. These words don't change the meaning, they only make the code more readable. We can also have regular expression constraints like the one we have applied here to the social security number field of person. The R prefix indicates that this is a raw string literal. We can now use the simple types defined in our model to simplify and add extra meaning to our data structures. These simple type definitions are reusable and contain the same constraints that we previously applied directly to primitive properties in the structure. In the tax filing structure, let's change the type of the jurisdiction property to tax jurisdiction and make the year property day of year And finally, let's make the SSN property in person social security number. Thanks for watching this quick overview of data modeling essentials in Represent API Studio.